Okay, so last time we were going through uh, electromagnetic waves and the applications. Now, because we view, I go more into the math, I'm not going to have time to cover optics in details or interference or wave optics, even though it's in the streaming, it's a share folder. But on YouTube, if you go to my other class, which is physics-based algebra, then if you want, if, if you need that to take the MCAT, for example, or if you are a physics major, then you can go on that other playlist. And at the end of the playlist, I'm covering, you know, even though I do it quickly, I still talk about interference, constructive interference, destructive interference, and then I, I go into um, wave optics. And then after the exam, I'm going to make a special playlist just for fluid. Because if you go to health major, if you are a pre health major, if you want to take the MCAT, if you are in marine biology, or, or just uh, if you want to do biology, you know, everything fluid is very important for blood pressure, for example, to understand how it works or to understand how fluid works, right? So I will do that after the exam. Okay, so that was my announcement. And MRI, of course, is a very nice application of both electromagnetic waves, but also what we have learned about magnetism. Okay, so nuclei, here you have um, a nucleus of hydrogen, they behave like a small magnet because they spin. And do remember that the origin of magnetism is moving charges, okay? Moving something positive or something negative. So even when the nucleus here of hydrogen is spinning, it, it's going to create a magnetic field, so it will behave like a small magnet. And do remember that will be the north and that's going to be the south. It turns out that if you remember what we have learned um, in when we were doing magnetic moment, I think we had a, a, a few a few assignments, like a few problems about magnetic moment. It's of course very important. But remember then. If, if you have a very strong magnetic field, like you have in an MRI, so they put you in some kind of tube, and then they're going to have a very strong magnetic field. That magnetic field can be produced by coil. So you have one coil here and one coil there. So it creates a very strong magnetic field. And then if you have small magnet inside that magnetic field, it wants to go to the lower state of energy, okay? So that will be a small magnet, it wants to do this. Because it's quantum physics, you know, some of those little magnets, and they are actually hydrogen nuclei, and remember our body is very squishy, it's fluidy, you know, it's made of all this hydrogen H2O, so you have a lot of hydrogen in your body. So because it's quantum physics, some of it, you know, go against the main, the, the mainstream, if you want. But most of them will go in that direction because that's where the potential energy will be the lowest. And then what you do, remember what in physics we have something called resonance. So it's when you excite a system at the right frequency. So, for example, if you are pushing a swing with a child on it and you push it at the right rhythm, so at the right frequency, it's going to go higher and higher and higher. Likewise, when you have a tank circuit, like in a microwave, right, it's going to oscillate at the right frequency. You're going to have an antenna, so the right frequency between the capacitor and the inductor, so it's going to oscillate and it's going to emit microwaves with an antenna. Likewise, if you have a spring and a mass, 
you pull it, it's going to oscillate at a given frequency, okay? That's a frequency of resonance. When, when you are falling in love, for example, your pupils start to dilate, right? And you go off the roof, okay? You are in resonance, okay? So that's when you excite a system at the right frequency. So what we're going to do with all those little magnets, we're going to have um, a radio waves, okay? That's going to excite them at the right frequency. And of course, you need to find the right frequency, and all those little magnets get excited, okay? So they go to a higher level of energy. So what is the higher level of energy is then all those little magnets, they flip over, okay? They, they go in the other direction, so that will be a higher level of energy. So it works exactly like electrons. I'm sure you learn in chemistry that you can have electronic transition. You excite the electrons with the right energy. They go to a higher level of energy, and then they burp out their energy. So not only it works for electrons, but it also works for those uh, nuclei that behave like magnetic moments. So they go high, okay? And then when they're going to relapse, they're going to flip again. So they're going to burp out all those radio waves in, in all direction. And so the result of that is going to be that you're going to be highlighted by radio waves from inside out, inside out, in all direction. So it works like a PET scan. When you have a PET scan, you create, you produce gamma rays in all direction, and you are this is resonance, you see, when the wind is pushing at the right frequency, the bag starts to oscillate, and it goes higher and higher, and it's very annoying. That's resonance, right? You, you, you know that with your car, if you have a cheap car, you know, with not very good suspension, and you go bump, 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 and then it goes crazy like this, and you cannot stop? Okay, this is resonance too. So you are highlighted from inside out and you can see stuff you cannot see as good as you can see with a cat scan or a pet scan right because the wavelength is not small enough but of course it's not as dangerous because a pet scan you cannot have it more than once a year or once every six years for example right so i just want to show you that so let's add a tumor god forbid so can i add the tumor okay so a tumor, of course, it's something that will grow and it's not uh, under control. A tumor, it's made of cells that are very weak because the only thing they do is to reproduce themselves. Okay, so they grow, 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 grow. So here you have the tumor and I'm going to turn on the power. Okay, so it means I'm, I'm putting radio waves, but I'm not at the right frequency. So since I'm not at the right frequency, nothing really happens. So if it's, it's very hard to find the right frequency to excite. Ah, uh, do we see something here? Okay. I found the resonance frequency. So if I have the right frequency for the wave, you see, you, you flip them over and you're going to be here. Here we go. Do you see? You see now how by exciting the small magnet, they go against the magnetic field and then they come back. So they're burping out radio waves from inside out. And then you have detector all around your head. So it's called tomography. You can have a 3D image of what's going on in your brain, right? So that's, that's how it works. So super duper interesting. Uh, here, I let you watch that at home if you want. It happened in New York. So what happened in a uh, lab technician was being uh, careless, I don't know. What, why, but he or she, I don't know, left a extinguisher, a fire extinguisher in the room, 
And when and there was a kid six years, I don't know how old was the kid, six years old or 12 years old, when the magnetic field was turned on, the magnetic field is so strong that it sucked in the extinguisher and killed the kid. His head was killed. And, and in that video, of course, you, you don't see that, but they show um, a water molan. So they use a water molan as, as the head, and there is a, a fire extinguisher, and you see how it's going to be sucked in, and the water molan goes in pieces, right? So they use that technology also to make a rail gun. The military is highly classified, but basically when you turn on a magnetic field and you have a projectile inside, you go, shoom, right? It's very powerful. You can build one if you like to build stuff. You know, it's not that hard. All you need is very strong ultra capacitor and, and you can build your own rail gun. Okay. Uh, radio waves have a big wavelength. So, okay, I just want to uh, open the parenthesis here, something which is very important, especially if you are uh, using microscope, for example. There is something called the diffraction. Okay, diffraction. So what is diffraction? Is that when a wave, so th this is a property of any wave, sound wave, light wave, um, any wave, right? So when a water wave, each time you have an opening, okay, so the light here, we have red light, they go through an opening. What is the opening? The opening could be, for example, a telescope, the objective. It could be your eyes. Your eyes is an opening, right? So light goes through here, and then if the wavelength is greater than the opening, the light will spread out, spread around the corner. So because of that, it makes very difficult when you are using an optical telescope, you won't be able to see anything with a size smaller than the wavelength you are using. So optical microscope, I want to say microscope. No, I, I don't know if I say telescope, microscope, microscope, okay? If you are using a microscope, okay, you can look at DNA. DNA is a big strand, and it will be bigger than the visible light wavelength. But if you are looking at a virus, okay, COVID especially is very small, 0 0.2 micrometer. So it goes through anything, fibers, you know, it's really, really, really small. Then you cannot use an optical microscope. Do you know what type of microscope you have to use? Electron microscope, right? Because electrons will behave like waves, and they have a smaller wavelength than the size of a virus, right? So, for example, which, which one has the greatest wavelength, red or blue? The, the very good, blue, smaller wavelength. So, if it goes through an opening, it's not going to spread as much as red. So, if you want to look at small things with a microscope, you use blue light. And, and you use a filter, you get rid of the red light, and you use rather blue light, okay? So, this is called diffraction. So that what is limiting, for example, the resolution of a telescope. That's because of diffraction. Diffraction, um, I don't know if I can make a picture for you to understand. If, uh, if you have a telescope here, okay, in, in the best of the world, if you have a star here, and you have another star there, okay, you want to tell them apart, that will be the resolution. So here you are looking through a telescope, you have some kind of lens here, of course. In the best of the world, you're going to see the star here and the star there. Okay, so you can tell them apart. The minimum 
uh, distant. That works also for microscopes, especially if you are in biology, you know, they, they're going to tell you the resolution of a microscope is the smaller distance between two objects that you can see. Now, because of that diffraction, what's going to happen? That star here, the light from the star, it's going to spread out. So now I have a, a fuzzy thing. And the light from that star here, it's also going to spread out. So now they are merging together, and you cannot tell them apart. So on your uh, photographic film, and the same thing with a microscope, instead of staying two viruses here, and everything will merge, maybe you're going to see one, or maybe you're not going to be able to see it, right? So everything is merging in one. So how can we solve this problem? You have two ways. You, you want to make a bigger opening so it doesn't spread that much. You, have a, you are limiting the diffraction. Or you can use a smaller wavelength. So let me ask you something. If you are using radio waves, okay, do you expect to have a big wavelength or a small wavelength? Radio waves? They have big wavelength, okay? From gamma, gamma, remember that for the final, right? Gamma, small wavelength, high energy, high frequency. Gamma, X-ray, UV, visible light, microwave, radio wave. Radio wave has the longest wavelength, okay? It can be as big as BBC campus. So big wavelength small frequency compared to others, and small energy. Yeah. Very good. Very good. If I try to trick you, they all travel at the speed of light, right? They all have the same speed. Very good, because uh, remind, um, a uh, reminder here, and I think you're going to use it for the final, right? The speed is wavelength times frequency. So if the wavelength is very small, the frequency is very big. And we're going to see that Einstein said that light is actually made of photons, like little particle of energy, the particle wave, little photons, especially if it's X-ray, gamma ray, they behave like little projectile, destroying stuff. The energy of a photon is proportional to the frequency. So if you have high frequency, that means the energy will be high, but the speed is always the same. So radio waves have really, really big wavelengths. So that's a problem, because that means that when you have a radio wave, let's say you have a big building here, right? And you have a big radio wave. So it's going to come, and it's so big, it's going to fill the building here. Ooh. So what it's going to do, it's going to bend around like the building does not exist, and it keeps going. So AM, for example, have a biggest wavelength than FM. So if uh, Brandon wants to listen to a broadcast and there is a big tower, maybe the library, for example, and there is an AM uh, radio wave coming up, no problem, Brandon can listen to it. But if there is a FM broadcast he wants to listen to because he loves classical music and FM has a better resolution, you love classical music, right? Okay, so there's a big building, but FM have a smaller wavelength. So what's going to happen is going to be stopped by the building, and you won't be able, very sadly, to listen to your favorite radio channel, right? So bigger is the wavelength, more, more it's going to diffract, bend around corners. So we have this issue with radio waves. We want to listen to radio waves because that's how, for example, we have detected a supermassive black hole 
at the center of our galaxy because you have so many radio waves being emitted. That's how we learn about neutron star. Neutron star emit radio waves. So we want to listen to them. What do they have to tell us? However, they have a very bad resolution because they will bend around the opening of the telescope. So what we used to do is to have a huge telescope, very, very big, you know, as big as possible, so to get a better resolution. So that was in Puerto Rico, Arecibo, right? And, and that telescope here was able to detect the first exoplanets and many more in 1996 around another star. And I don't know if you know, um, they, they had the James Bond movie and, and they filmed the movie around here and, and you see the bad guy hanging. Oh, no, I think it was the good guy, James Bond, hanging over there. So you see how it works here? It's a... Uh, Something golden eye? No, maybe not golden eye. I forgot the movie, but you can Google it. Uh, so the radio wave come from space, very, very far away. So all the light is doing this, all parallel to each other. And this is a concave mirror. See, it makes a cave. So all the light will converge at one point here. Right? So it's a converging device. So everything will converge here and here it's connected to a sensor and it's sent to a computer. That, that, that's how dishes work. Yeah. In the middle what? Uh, you, will, you will have maybe to stand here so maybe the sunlight will cook you. Here it's just a microwave, but well, that's a good question because that's how they make an oven, right? Because any concave mirror has a focal length. So the way it works is that uh, it will collect light from the sun, for example, and all the light will be bouncing back at the same point, which is called a focus. So if you put something here, of course, it's going to get hotter, right? And that's how like those dishes, you know, you you see, you go to a certain few like given neighborhood and they all have those dishes aiming aiming at the same satellite, right? So it's broken and uh, they didn't fix it. They didn't bother to fix it. Apparently, they don't have money for science, um, so it doesn't work anymore. I think some ties were broken, but they have a new technology using interference, constructive interference, destructive interference. So interference, I show you last time, is when two waves are at the same time, uh, at the same place, so they interfere with each other. So what they do, they have all those small dishes and they connect them together. So everything happens like you have a big one. Okay, it's like they are building a big one using small ones, right? So it's a very cool technology. So this is in Chile, because in Chile it's very dry. There is a desert there. It's called, uh, I forgot the name of the desert, but it's, you can Google Alma Observatory, Chile, because you don't have humidity. So it's a great place to collect radio waves. So that's how it works. So just a parenthesis about diffraction, because it's so cool. So you see here, if you have FM, so you are broadcasting FM, or you are broadcasting, I don't know, internet or radio waves or whatever, and if the wavelength, so remember, this is the crest. We are looking like from above, these are the crest, right? So the waves are doing this, crest, throw, crest, throw, crest, throw. And instead of doing that, of course, it's easier to do this. So that will be the wavelength. So if the wavelength, so it's not on scale, but if the wavelength is bigger than the obstacle, so bigger than those things here, it's going to bend around. So if you have a wavelength coming, that obstacle here 
is smaller than the wave one, it's going to bound around, right? So it's bounding around. So this is called diffraction. So here you are happy. You can, uh, Brandon is in the house here. He can listen to the broadcast. You have an antenna and everything is fine. But if you try to listen to FM, FM has a smaller wavelength. So it's not going to bound around as much. You know what's happening. Okay. I don't know if it's my chat or it's just no. Okay, it's not responding. Okay, let's let's try to do this this way. No, so it's snipping too. So if, if you have FM uh, radio wave, so the wavelength is smaller than the obstacle. So what's going to happen? It's going to not bend around. So it's going to keep going this way. Okay. So maybe if Brandon lives here, he's going to collect. But if you live here, here you have a shadow because it doesn't bend around the corner. If you are lost at sea, so what do you use? What, what is that called? You, you know the horn, right? Does it have a low frequency or high frequency? Very low, right? That people go crazy. So low frequency. So what's going to happen? Low frequency means what? Big wavelength or small wavelength? Long wavelength. So it means if you are lost at sea, that's what they're going to use. Because if you are here, so Michaela is lost at sea here, and, but, and maybe someone can help you here, but on the way maybe you have a boat or rocks and so forth. If you are using Okay, it's going to bounce back if you are using, you know, the, the wave is not going to see that. It's going to be invisible, so it's going to bounce around and people can save you. Isn't that cool? So it's the same thing that I think there was a pop quiz question with that. Firefighter use infrared sensor. Infrared has long wavelength compared to visible light. So if someone is stuck, and here you have dust all over, the visible light coming, you know, will be stopped by the dust. But infrared, and we are all emitting infrared because we are burning fuel and we are alive. The same thing, the Earth is emitting infrared. We are not emitting visible light. Visible light is just because it bounces off, right? But infrared light will band around the dust and then someone can see it if you are trying to see a virus let's say this is the virus here and um, with a with a microscope so this is your microscope you see there is always a light here in your microscope if you are using visible light the visible light will just do this band around the virus you're not going to see anything if instead you are using microwave, so my, um, not microwave, electron waves, so then here you're going to have a shadow, a shadow here, and you will be able to see the virus. Again, 0 0.2 micrometer is quite small. Okay, it goes through everything. So that's the idea of diffraction okay you you can do diffraction diffraction is a property of any wave so if you have water here going through a small opening the opening will be smaller than the wavelength see that will be the wavelength that you're opening you see the opening is smaller than the wavelength 
it's going to diffract, spread, bend. If the opening is big, you see the opening is bigger than the distance between two crests, it's going to go straight. Very interesting stuff here. And you can do the same thing. Why are you can hear, like even if you have a noise proof, proof, uh, noise proof, like you cannot hear any noise from outside in the room, you can still hear if the door is open, you can still hear people talking in the corner because if they talk in the corner, going here, the, the, if, if the wavelength of the sound is bigger than the door, the sound from outside, even if someone is hiding in the corner, it's going to spread around. Okay? So if I'm talking here and I don't want people to listen, someone can be hiding here, you know, spying on me. And the sound from my voice will spread around the corner and that person will be able to spy on me. Huh? Isn't that cool? And uh, of course here, Sound, when you are listening to music, you have high frequency and low frequency. So which one will spread more? High frequency, low frequency, right? Low frequency will spread more. So it means the low frequency, you can hear it here and here there if you are listening to music. But the high frequency, you can only hear it in, in that here. So that's why as you move from a speaker, you know, you're not going to hear the same frequency as much. Maybe the, the lower frequency will be higher and the, um, here, louder, and you don't hear the uh, uh, um, high frequency as much. But you see how the high frequency does not spread as much? So high frequency here will be very loud if you are in that position here because energy do you remember how energy will uh, spread out works with light so do remember for the practice final this equation for number two i forgot really to ask the question the question for number two is what is the power so remember when you have a source of sound a source of light and if it spread out in all directions, the oomph, okay? So how much radiation is being birthed out every second? That will be the power. And then it spread out over a bigger distance. So if it's 3D, it spread out over a sphere. And so you have the same power spreading out here. So the same energy, but it's going to be diluted, right? So if I want to find how much energy is going through a one meter by one meter, the equation is power divided by four by r squared. I think I have a question like that on the final. The unit here is energy flowing per second per square meter. This is the energy flowing per unit second. Is that clear? Of course, if you have sound, and if you have a speaker, so this is a speaker here, of course, it's not going to go into three dimension. You're going to have something like this, right? So you will have to divide by some kind of shape, which is a fraction. So you will have to find 4 pi r square, then you divide by the fraction of the sphere that you are cutting out. So that's how it works. You can even find the resolution. So how much is going to spread around depends on the wavelength and the size of your opening. So bigger opening, less spreading out. A smaller wavelength, less spreading out. Okay? So that's how we can explain interference. So when you have, if you, it's a very famous experiment, uh, interference, right? We, I show you that if you want to do like a video about that, you take two tennis balls, you take a pond, you have a lot of pond out there. Florida is all about ponds. Okay, I never seen so many ponds in my life. <laughs> 
I'm just scared of alligator chilling out, but I've never seen an alligator so far, so that's why. Right. So two tennis balls, attach that to two sticks, and you start to shake those tennis balls. You see light will spread out, and you're going to interfere with each other. So same thing here. You have to, you need to have a light source with the same, like a laser, right? Red, same frequency, or one single frequency, one single you cannot do it with this. Uh, you have one color, one wavelength. See, light will go and spread out, right? That's diffraction. And here you have two sources now of red light spread out, spread out. They're going to interfere with each other. And if you have a screen here, you're going to have something like this. You're going to see on the screen, you're going to see a pattern of bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. So here you have crest to crest coming from here. Here you are half a wavelength shifted, so crest to throw, nothing, no light. Here, so well, it's very interesting when you think about it because what you are doing, you are destroying light. You have a way to destroy light. And here, one wavelength away, crest to crest, is going to be um, bright, okay? So that's how interference works. By, by the way, I, I got a message from my physics department. And uh, the, the, if you are a physics major, I think they want physics major, but you can try if you are engineers. They don't have enough people applying, so it doesn't hurt to try. Um, and, and they will pay you $15 an hour or something like this. It's called nuclear. It's at FIU, I think, nuclear physics. I, I put the flyer. You can say, oh, I'm passionate about physics. I'm going to change my major. You know, I'm going to graduate in physics. I'm, I'm an engineer, but I plan to change. You know, you can. So anyway, so those lights here, they come. Uh, I have to do it well. Come here, here, here. Oops, crest to crest is going to be bright. So here, and you can do the math. It's in my next slide. And again, I, I won't be able to cover it, but if you go to my other playlist, I, I, I do more simulation, uh, my other class, college algebra, because I don't do that much math like I do with you. So I cover it. So you have one wave here coming here, and now they are shifted. The length is shifted by half a wavelength, right? So here it's coming G, 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 G. And I have to do it right. I didn't do it right, of course. It has to be half. A, oh, you know what? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to start from here. So here I'm, I'm going to have a, a throw. And here, a, okay. So it's going to do like this. So here they're going to be shifted. So if I call that D1 and this is D2, here I have D2. 2 minus d1 equals half a wavelength. Here they are the same distance. And here they are at, no, they are at the same distance, so this is 0. Here you are d2 minus d1 equals 1 wavelength. Is that clear? So that's just if you have to take the MCAT or another exam, you never know. So, you know, once you understand how it works, you know, in physics, it's all about concepts. When you have the concept, you understand, then everything else is just math. That's why it's good to take physics if you are in engineering or, or even biology, because then it's, you have the tools, right? So let me show you again, like if you have a speaker, here, that will be a source A. And let's say you have a wave. I make it square because, of course, it's easier for me to make a square wave than it is for a sine, uh, uh, sine waves.
Okay, and here, here let's say I, I have another speaker B. So, and here I'm listening to the sound. Do you understand? So I have two speakers. That speaker make that wave. It, it's a sound wave, so it's push and pull the molecules that will get to your eardrum that will be pushed and pulled. So basically it's high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. Squeeze, stretch, squeeze, stretch. I should do that every morning, right? Stretch, stretch, squeeze, stretch, squeeze, stretch. It's some exercise here. So here you have a speaker. What's going to happen here? Is it constructive or destructive? Constructive, very good. But now I move the speaker by half a wavelength. So now I have my speaker B here, and I'm still listening. Am I, oops, oh, it give me like sick, car sick. So is it half a wavelength? Is it destructive or constructive? Destructive, very good, right? So it means when the two speakers, you can have fun at your home, you have two speakers, you move each other, you find the spot. So here you hear very well. You have your brother, sister, someone, a volunteer here listening. Oh, it's very loud. Hi, hi, hi. Right? And then you move away from each other, the two speakers. And when you don't hear any noise, and the noise is very low, that will be destructive. It's perfectly working if you have a pure tone. Of course, if you have more than one tone, it's going to just going to be lower. And now you have, you move the speaker a little bit forward, and that it's constructive again. So if the speakers are one wavelength away from each other, it's going to be constructive, right? And then here it's going to be what? Constructive or destructive? Destructive. So it will be 1.5 wavelength away and then 2.5 wavelength away so, huh? destructive because look you have crest like here you have your speaker right right so it's going to be um, zero wavelength half a wavelength one wavelength 1 1.5 wavelength and you have your speaker here so they're going to destroy each other no matter where you stand. So if you are standing here, you're not going to hear any noise. Is that clear? So it's ex uh, for light, it's, it's uh, working exactly the same way. Here, you, you will, to do the math, and I know for the MCAT, it's, it's covering, it's just equation, but once you understand the physics behind it, you know, you don't, you don't never memorize. You always understand the concept. And then the equation makes sense to you. See here, uh, between the two waves coming, there is no shift. Here, half a wavelength. Here, one wavelength. So the math is in my next uh, package of slides. And again, uh, you, you, you can have access to it. But I'm not covering it today. I don't have time. But you can find it in my other class, playlist, OK? Okay, so diffraction is a big deal. So when you are looking in space as a conclusion, you never see that, okay? This is BS, okay? That never happens. So it's a computerized image. So what they do, they, are look, they use an X-ray telescope, so they are collecting only X-ray. And here they use maybe Hubble telescope, so only optical visible light. And then they have a radio telescope, and they're going to see that. And then another radio in another range of wavelength, they're going to see that. And then the computer combine everything together, and that's how you have those beautiful pictures. If you go in space, you're only going to see that optical. Of course, we don't have X-ray eyes, and we don't have UV eyes, and we don't have gamma rays eyes, so you need different telescopes. As you go to smaller wavelengths, the technology behind the telescope uh, becomes more and more complicated because go have a telescope with X-rays, okay? X-rays just go through it. So you need a very high technology. By the way, there is an astronomy class, AST1002. Amazing class if you want to learn about all that. So if you are looking at the Milky Way, so we, we live in a Milky Way galaxy. It's a flat disk, okay? 
Okay, so that's the Milky Way looking on the side. Yeah, that will be the Milky Way. And we live somewhere here, but it's like a disk flat. So if you are looking at the size, because we live somewhere in that disk, yeah, you are looking at the edge of the galaxy. So if you are looking at the the the, the cut of your galaxy, that's what you're gonna see. Okay, nothing special. I mean it's beautiful. Infrared, you're gonna see something different. You see that it's very hot here because we have a black hole. Any galaxy has a black hole. You can look at the radio waves, it will look different. Oh, that's amazing, beautiful. Wow. Let's just take a moment, you know, to appreciate X-ray skies. Beautiful, beautiful. So what a beauty, right? So you, you combine all those uh, uh, range of electromagnetic waves. So this is called the Crab Nebula. It's very famous. It was observed by the Chinese in 1054. It was the remnant of a supernova. Only the Chinese reported that supernova, which is very weird because in 1054, everyone should have seen it. So supernova is a thermonuclear reaction very violent, very extreme. So it's very bright. It stays very bright for a few days and then it disappears. And then here you have a neutron star, but only the Chinese report 1054. Um, people think that maybe in Europe they were very superstitious, so they didn't want to talk about it. Maybe it was bad luck, you know, bad omen. So whatever. But that's what you see in optical X-ray. You see you have jet here. That's because you have a neutron star infrared radio wave. Okay, so just a quick um, parenthesis here. Light is made of photons, so you can see light as wave, but as I told you, smaller is the wavelength, they will behave more like small projectiles, like you are, if you are exposed to gamma rays, you can get radiation sickness because all those little gamma rays are small enough and have enough energy to burp out their energy into your cell, destroy the cell, boom, explosion of the cell, too many cells, you have radiation sickness, you die, God for a debate, in a few days, right? That's, that's what happened when they are making the bomb. They were making the bomb, the plutonium bomb, in uh, Los Salamos. I think, it, uh, I think it was in New, I forgot, Arizona or uh, Los Alamos or New Mexico. Okay, yeah, you can check it uh, very easily. So the, 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 the first guy um, experimenting radiation sickness because he was building the bomb, the plutonium bomb, and there was an accident that happened. You can Google the story. So he was exposed to so much radiation. And then the radiation decreases as the inverse of the distance, so the other guy were okay, but he was really close. And because radiation works like that, so if you are farther away you are, you're not going to be exposed to so many radiation. If you are close to the source, you're going to be exposed to a lot of radiation. So he, he reported everything that was happening to him. Loss of hair, loss of everything, you know, it's like chemotherapy on steroids. And he reported everything so much he was passionate about science, so he wanted to help others. Horrible death. It's a horrible death. Radiation sickness is a horrible death. It happened also in, uh, I don't know if you remember, I think it was in the 90s, there was a double spy. So a guy uh, from Russia that moved to British, to England, and was spying for the, for the British against Russia. So... They, they gave him, so we don't know who did it. Maybe it was not Russia. It was someone who didn't like him, for sure, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they gave him uh, polonium. Polonium is a radioisotope. It's an alpha emitter. And if you hold it in your hand, that's fine, okay? It emits helium nuclei. So it's like two protons, fine. It doesn't go through your skin. But if you ingest it, so they put polonium powder in his tea, drink. Of course, it's inside now. It destroys you from inside. 
So he had radiation sickness. I mean, you can see the pictures. It's a horrible picture. He lost his hair, you know, he died. And then they put him in a coffin. I cannot say his name because his name is uh, Alexander. You, you can, I mean, if you're interested, uh, I, I can show you the slides or I can find the, the name. Leave it and tough. I, I forgot the name, okay? So they had to put him in a lead coffin. So much radioactivity was coming out of his body. So he lay in uh, London. So of course you don't have to kill someone like that. You can just push him out of the window, you know, uh, run over him, you know. So if they did it, it's dead because they wanted to make a... Okay, listen. Send a message, right? Yeah. Yeah, say it out loud. How do you say? How do you spell it? Right, right. So you can uh, you can learn about his case. It's a terrible story. So uh, so energy of each photon is proportional to the frequency. The speed is the wavelength times the frequency. Photons have wavelength, uh, uh, sorry, uh, photons have momentum, it can kick, can bounce off. So you can s use the light from the sun to make a sail moving, and they did it, right? It can kick like this and bounce off. So I'm skipping the math, but you see that as you increase here the frequency, you decrease the wavelength. And smaller they get, more dangerous they get. As you move away from it, you see those photons here. They stretch out so much that they will never behave like particles. They always behave like a wave, a radio wave. You know, always behave like a wave. Uh, if you have UV, behave more like a particle when it gets inside you. A UV photon from the sun. If you don't have a good immune system, especially, it can, uh, it can kick out DNA, you can develop cancer, okay? Although we need UV for vitamin D, of course. Okay, so that's the story. And that is that. Um, the only thing I didn't tell you is that, of course, the, the wave, electromagnetic wave, doesn't go always like this, okay? It goes in all directions. So it's going to vibrate in this direction, that direction, that direction, that direction. So you, 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 can, you can have Polaroid like this. Like if you know that the wave is coming in this direction, you can have that, so you kill the wave. So you have those special glasses that when you have light bouncing off the road, right, those glasses will kill those waves that are reflected. So they are oriented in such a way, like this, that the reflection from the rod will be killed by your glasses and, and you are not uh, blind by the reflection from the rod. They, these are special glasses. You can do that with your uh, computer. If you take a Polaroid, if you have Polaroid glasses, you do it in one way, you cannot see your computer anymore. The other way, you can see your computer because they are polarized. Yes, you can, you can Google it to learn more. Okay, geometrical optics in in uh, nutshell. So this is my favorite band. Okay, my watch stopped in the 80s. Sorry about that. So light can be refracted. Uh, and someone brought me uh, like I told you, if you do like some kind of experiment, you can try that. So refraction, I don't know if you can see, but you can see the light coming out. When it's coming out, it's refracted. You see, instead of being a straight line, you see it's, it makes it bad. And if I do it right, but it has to be dark, I, ca I can see a rainbow. Okay? I can see the rainbow here. So if you want to do it, but I can see red, yellow, blue. And I think there is a Pop quiz question about that. Blue is more refracted than red because blue will slow down more in glass than red. Okay, so you have refraction. 
And remember, it's like a marching band. Light will slow down in anything that is denser than the air. So let me uh, ask you something. Aren't you here, usually? Yeah. I, am, I, I forgot about you. I have to do it. Um, dense air. No, warm air. Is it denser or less dense than cold air? Less dense, right? Because the gas, you know, they are very excited, move away, you know, social distancing, get away from me. So less dense. So less dense, light will go faster or slower? Faster, very good, right? Cold air will go slow. Um, Cold air will go slow, uh, slower, right? So that's how we can explain the mirage. So, for example, if everything was at the same temperature, there is no layers into the atmosphere. So light from the sun, uh, from the light, from the sky, sorry, coming, and you see a big blue, where you are supposed to see a big blue in the sky. <laughs> but because the atmosphere has layers, and this is very hot because it's a desert, and, and, and this is cool because, you know, the, the sand is very hot. You know, you know that when you uh, walk on the beach, it's going to be very hot. And uh, here it's cooler. You can see that if you go on the beach, for example, you have that phen phenomenon. So light will come from the big blue. And here, because hot is faster, it's going to bend away. It's going to bending away so much, so it's going to be curved. But your brain didn't take physics 204 night, so it thinks that light comes in a straight line. So that big blue here, that big blue that comes to your eyes, because you think it's a straight line, you're going to see a big blue here. And that's called a mirage. And, and you go for it, and you jump for it, and you have like a brain something, right? You jump in the water and it's not water or you are very disappointed, right? That's how mirage works. Uh, same thing with sound. Uh, if you have sound, for example, so in the morning you cannot hear sound from very far away because in the morning you have hot air and air. So hot air, the molecules move faster. So the sound will move faster, right? Cool air molecules are lazy, so the sound will be lazy as well. So here, because this is hot, so sound will go fast, and this is cool, sound will go slow. It's going to curve in this direction, you're not going to hear. So if you live by your train station, you're not going to the train in the morning. But in the evening, the opposite happens. This is cool now because the air... You know, the, the earth cooled down and it's still very hot. The hot air moves up and you're going to hear very, very, like, boom, 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 boom. you don't hear that in the morning, uh, in the evening, like those crazy people with Polaris and they go, boom, boom, boom. and you can hear it very well in the evening because of that, right? It's called inversion. So, you know, sound can travel very, very fast when that happens. Okay, so this is called refraction. Likewise, if you look at someone in the ocean, light from the foot, you know, travel in the water, and then because it goes from slow to fast, it says, oh, I can take my time, okay? It's gonna bend away, right, like a marching band, but your brain didn't take physics 2049, so it thinks that your feet is here. So you're going to see someone with very short leg. So the feet, the image of the feet will be here, and this is called a virtual image. It's like ghostly image, right? Uh, likewise, if you are looking at a pen in, in water, it seems to be broken, but it's not the case. If you are trying to aim at a fish, see the light from the fish comes here, but then it's refracted, so you see the fish closer to the surface, and you see it as a ghost. So it's a virtual image. You try to catch the fish, and there is nothing here. 
And if you aim at the fish that you are seeing, boom, you're going to miss it. Isn't that cool? Should aim like under? Yes, under. And, and if you are a trained, uh, I don't know, bow, uh, killer of fish using bows, then you, you get used to it and you know intuitively where you have to shoot, right? Same thing if you have like a, a spear, you know, right? You can do that. People doing that, right? But I don't think they do it with a bow, but they, they can do it with a If you are a survivalist, right? and you go and you need to eat fish, right? Fish is healthy. So you, you learn how to do it, right? So, so many applications. That's super interesting. Uh, another thing, so light a band when it goes through a piece of glass. So this is called a converging lens. So that's the very cheap $1.25 store or $1.25 store, because it's not $1 anymore. But you, you buy those glasses very cheap. They are magnifying glass. So for the people who uh, get old, for example, they cannot read clothes, they need magnifying glass. That's the glasses that you buy. They are very cheap, okay? Very easy to make. And why do we need that when we get older? Because in your eye here, you have a pupil and you have some liquid. So both the pupil and the liquid are converging lines. But you're going to learn in a few years, how, like I'm learning, <laughs> but when you get older, everything gets stiff. Okay, you, your jump gets stiff, your muscle gets stiff. So even the muscle here gets stiffer. So you cannot focus, you cannot change, you know, the focal, um, the, 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 the size of your lens here. Okay? It, it doesn't work anymore, okay, you're stiff. What can I tell you? So you cannot focus anymore on something very close. So you need those special glasses to see. So these are converging lens. Because light, say, coming from very far away are always parallel, and they all focus at one single point. And I know you did that in the lab. So you take a magnifying glass, you have a piece of paper, and you, you, there is a sun, you have a very bright dot here. That will be the image of your sun upside down. Okay, if you want to convince yourself that light has energy, you put an ant, like a bug, try to do that, you're going to burn the bug. That's what a student <laughs> suggested. Now, you don't want to do that. You can do that with a piece of paper, for example, and you, you might burn it because all the energy from the sun here is here. So that's the image of the sun. So that's a converging lens. These are more expensive. They are called, so this is called convex. These are called concave because they make a cave. That's how I remember. So they are diverging lines. These, these are those. Those are very expensive. That, that will help you seeing from far. So I, I am short-sighted, okay, near-sighted. I cannot see Anthony. Okay, now Anthony, even Brandon is fuzzy. Michael is, is fuzzy. Guys, forget about it. Everyone is fuzzy. Okay, I cannot see anyone clear. I just have fuzzy stuff, spot all over, right? So you, you need those con, uh, diverging lines, and these are expensive. You cannot find them at the dollar stores. And what they do, if you have parallel rays, they diverge. Like it's coming from a point here, we call the focal point. So of course, all that is very useful, so we can make a... So again, if you want all the details for that... Uh, you need, you, you go in my playlist, my other playlist, and I go into details. So this is the normal eye. So you think that's just the pupil, but it's not. You also have some kind of liquid. If you did anatomy, I'm sure you're aware of it. If you are looking something very, very, very far away, all the light converge here on your, what is it called? Retina, right? And then the image that you see is upside down. And then the image, you know, you have sensor, it goes to your optical nerve connected to your brain, and your brain is smart enough to put it upright. 
So a professor did an experiment. He put glasses, special glasses that put everything upside down. And he kept those glasses. And then after a while, the brain adapted and put everything upright again. So when you remove the glasses, everything was upside down. So it's just to give you the potential of the brain. It's an amazing thing, right? So we don't think upside down. We see them upright, even though the image here should be upside down. So when you have my issue, which being nearsighted, the eye, my eye, are squishy. If you have this problem, if you're nearsighted, your eye is like an egg. Instead of being nice and spherical, it's squeezed. In this direction. So what's going to happen? You are missing the retina. So what you see here, the light goes, keep going, keep going. So instead of having one dot, you're going to see something blurry. Okay. So which glasses do I need? Something that push away or bring it? <coughs> so the point is here, and I want the point there. Push it. So that's why I need something, uh, a diverging lens that will push away, right? And, and if you are very, 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 very blind like I am, <laughs> I guess the dot is here. So you need something very, very, very strong. Plus I am astigmatic on, on top of it. So it's very expensive glasses, okay? It's not cool. Okay, so let's take old people now. The muscle gets stiff. And now the dot is here, okay? Because you see, bigger is the lens, more you know. You, then that means the light will will focus here if it's if it's thicker, and if it's thinner, it's move away. So now the dot is here. So what do I need to do? Push it or move it forward? I mean, push it or getting closer. Closer, put to work. So now I'm using a converging lens to fix that problem. So these are the cheap CVS. And then they tell you the number 2, 2.5, 2.75. And that, that will change the thickness of the lens. Thicker means, you know, more, more focus you get. Okay, so you, you start at 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 2.75. So that, that's how it works. And um, so here, what do we have? We have, do you think it's a microscope or is it a, t a telescope? Microscope, very good. So you are using two lenses. The first lens will bring that uh, image. It will be a real image here. So it will be the image close to you. And the second one will be like a magnifying glass. It's going to get bigger. This is a telescope. So the first lens, so that will be the objective. Bring the tree upside down here, close to you. And then it will make the tree uh, bigger. Okay, it's a virtual image. So yeah, I'm not going to in, into details, but that's the idea. Okay, so now I'm going to have 20 minutes to do everything in a nutshell. And again, I cover more into uh, in my other class, so I have another playlist for that. So you see, going from fast to slow, the light band toward, okay? So less dense to more dense. Let's look at waves. So what's happening to the wavelength as you go from less dense to more dense, fast to slow, less dense to more dense? What's happening to the wavelength? It gets smaller, okay? The wavelength would be the, 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 the distance between two crests, the wavelength gets smaller. Do you think the frequency is changing or do you see the same color? Same color. You can, you can do that. If I do that, the frequency doesn't change. So what has to change? 
So let's see. So speed, very good, okay? Speed is wavelength times frequency. If the wavelength goes down, this doesn't change. That has to go down. The speed of light will go down. And it will go down by a factor of, for example, for glass, you divide by 1.5. This is called the index of refraction. So the speed of light will, so you, you, I think they did uh, recently a material where you can almost stop the light, okay? It slowed down so much that you're almost stopping it. Uh, diamonds will uh, slow it down even more, okay? So any material that is denser than the air is going to have something called an index of refraction. So this is 1.5. So let's let's look at the speed. What's the speed here? Speed of light, 1c. Some of it is being refracted, some of it is reflected. So reflected, no problem. How much is that? Smaller, right? So it will be 77% the speed of light. Now, if you do 1 divided by 1.5, what do you get? 1 divided by 1.5, or 2 thirds. Very good, 0 0.67. Okay, so you see that the speed of light here inside the material is given by C divided by the index of refraction. So it's slowing down. Okay. Um, you can, you can, so of course, you're going to have a relationship between, oh, and also it depends on the, you see here I am at refraction. So this is, this is called the normal, because normal in mathematics is not that it's, you have normal and abnormal. <laughs> normal means perpendicular. That is called the refracted angle, uh, the incident angle, the reflected angle, and refracted angle. So refracted angle is about uh, 30 degrees. The incidence angle is about uh, 40, 45 degrees here. And if I take blue, you see, it's refracted more. And if I take violet, I don't know if you can see it move. It's even refracted more. Okay, so it really depends on the on, on the on the wavelength. So this is called the incidence angle. This is called the ref, the reflected angle, and this is called the refracted angle. I don't know refracted. So that angle. And this angle here, so first of all, incidence is the same thing as reflection. Okay, they bounce off. You're going to have the same angle here that you have here, but that angle is smaller. So there is a very easy mathematic equation that says that that angle here, so it will be, let's say, so the here, the index of refraction is 1. So I'm going to go call it n sub 1. Here is n sub 2. Uh, n sub 2 is 1.5, sorry. So there is an equation. It's called Snell's law that says that n1 sine the incidence angle equals n2 sine the refracted angle. So it should be refracted here. That's if you go from 1 to 2. It's a very simple equation. It relates this angle to that angle here. Okay? And I go, I, I, I go into more details in my other class if you want. So what do you think is going to happen? Or something very strange can happen now. Let's go back to my Java. Let's do the opposite. 
I'm gonna go from glass into air. Do you see refraction? Is there refraction here? Yeah, refraction, right? And reflection, right? Yes? Okay, I go from dense to less dense. Look what's gonna happen. I increase a little bit. What's happening to that angle? It gets close to what? 90 degrees, right? That 60, okay? 70, 80, closer to 90. Look what's gonna happen if I go beyond 90. Boof. What's happening? It's all everything is reflected. It cannot escape. Okay? This is called total reflection. You are trapping light. You can trap sound. Okay? <coughs> it only works when you go from dance to less dance. Okay? 90, boom. Total reflection. So, <coughs> this is uh, very cool because you have a lot of application with that. So, for, uh, for example, optical optics, uh, uh, fiber optics, <coughs> optic fibers use that principle. This is glass, this is air. If you aim at the right angle, light is trapped inside, it cannot escape. So it will keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. It can cover a very, very, very big distance without losing information, without losing energy. Okay? Because the frequency of a visible light is very large, like 10 to the 14 hertz, you can transport 10 to the 14 bits. Okay? So it's better than radio waves to transport information. Here is another example. Uh, waves, you all know, you know, they go, you know, they communicate with each other, but they can communicate over a very, very, very big distance. Okay, you can have one close to the North Pole, one close to Florida, maybe in the ocean, they communicate with each other. That's because inside the ocean, you have what is called a sound channel. And this is slow for sound. This is fast because you have more pressure. And this is fast because the water is warmer. And this is uh, slower than here, slower than there. So the waves, when they make a sound, the sound will be trapped in that channel. It will be reflected, reflected, reflected. So I don't know if you know, there was a movie called uh, Red October, and there was a very nice book. It was during um, the Cold War. And um, in the book, they, they say something which, which is, um, was classified. So the FBI, you know, start to freak out. How do you know that? It's just common sense. Just if you're a scientific, you know about that. Uh, the submarine, they will always go in that sound channel because when they turn on the engine, the sound will be trapped inside and you will go undetected, okay? Red October, there was a very good movie about that back then. It, it, it's a book also. Same thing happened during a uh, still Cold War, Soviet Union. So here you have home of Stalin. Stalin was a dictator, but he also was also very paranoid, right? You could not spy on him. He was so distrustful of everyone. You could not send a spy like they send spy today. So they, they had to find a different way to spy on what they were doing because, of course, they were trying the thermonuclear weapon, not the atomic bomb, but the hydrogen bomb, the edge bomb, right, the fusion bomb. So they wanted to spy uh, on them to see if they were doing any nuclear test. And they, they could not go there. Stalin was such a paranoid guy that he had even his food tested. There was a recent very good movie about him like he, he had a heart accident and no doctor wanted to take care of him. First of all, he had killed most of the doctors, right? A lot of Jewish doctors were sent to Siberia. So not many good ones were left. So he, he had a heart attack. 
he wake up and then he died and nobody would take care of him. Maybe they were happy that he died, but also there was no good doctor left, right? So he was a paranoia guy. So anyway, what they did, it was very highly classified. They had a huge microphone because at, at the time in the 60s, you know, they didn't have the tiny itty bitty microphone that we have today. They didn't have Silicon Valley. They didn't have microprocessor. They didn't have all those things, right? The uh, transistors. So they had those huge microphones. And then they attached the microphone to a balloon. By the way, this comes from a very good book that I highly recommend. It's called Physics for Future President, uh, Physics and Technology for Future President and CEO. Very super extra duper interesting. No math. Very cheap book. Like for a summer reading. I would check on you. Okay. If you have read, did your homework. Physics for Future. Uh, president and CEO. Very, very interesting book. So this comes from that book. And uh, so the, the, the microphone here was attached to a huge balloon. Okay. So what do we have in air, in the atmosphere? You also have a sound channel. Okay. Because this is warm, so fast. This is cool, so slow. Okay. Because as you go up, cooler you get, you know, that we go up a mountain. I smoky mountains, I love them. You go to, up to the mountain, it gets very cold. You have to be very careful. And then, but as you get higher, the, there is the ozone layer, which is ionized, so it gets hotter. So this is fast, so fast. So the idea is that each time they were doing a nuclear test, the sound will be trapped inside that sound channel, and you could hear the sound coming from a very big distance. And one day, you, you, you're going to help me on that. One day, what happened? What happened to the balloon? Crashed. And the disc, it was a disc. Microphone were in the shape of disc. <laughs> Fell. On, on what? On a city here, Roswell, New Mexico. And what did people say? Alien, it was a UFO. So the military people, because it was highly classified, said, yeah, 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 it's a UFO, you know. Oh, but we didn't want to tell you about it, right? Because he didn't want the Russian to know about it. That's how the whole story about Roswell started. And if you go to Roswell, they still have a museum where you can see E.T., you know, green. I don't know why alien species have to be green. Not sure why, but supposed to be green, but that's because their microphone crashed and it was highly, highly classified. So that story and that's this story, hmm? that's, how that's what, what? That's how big it was? It, yeah, it was, it was a huge microphone because they, it was before the transistor. So it was before the semiconductor. So I didn't know how to make it small. It's like in the old movie in the 50s. Do you remember the, the, the black and white movie? You see a big microphone? They used to have those big microphones. So yeah, it was huge. And people have seen the, the disc crashing on Earth. Right? You know why you are hearing that noise, OK? The noise comes here and bend around the corner. That's why you are hearing the noise. OK, that's E.T. So people told me that E.T. was brown. But here it's green. Is it green or brown? Do you remember the movie? Huh? Brown? OK, and uh, interesting also is diamond. So diamond, they will cut it. So it's, it's an all professional thing to be able to cut a diamond the right way. So what's so special about a diamond? The index of refraction is very high. So instead of being 1.5 for the glass, a diamond is 2.42. So the speed of light will be divided by 2.42. So you can do, you know, 1 divided by 2.5, and you see how much it has lost in speed. So it slowed down a lot. So that means 
you just have to increase the angle a little bit of incidence and it's going to be trapped. It's very easy to trap the light in a diamond. In addition to that, you cut it in such a way that you will be always bigger than the critical angle at which you have total reflection. So the light will be trapped in the diamond. So that's how you explain why your diamond is so shiny, because the light inside it, you know, keep reflected, being reflected, so it's very shiny. In addition to that, you have blue diamond, pink diamond, yellow black diamond, because of course the light will be refracted, so it makes like a rainbow. And uh, that comes also from the book I was telling you about. It's better to buy zirconium because, of course, you know, they, it's not nice the way they are getting diamond. There is this very good uh, movie it's called Blind Diamond. And if you are very sensitive, you know, if, if, if you get uh, very emotional, no, don't watch it, okay? But uh, zir zirconium is better, and in the book they explain that I'm taking a tangent. Okay, I should not take a tangent. <laughs> I, I tend to take tangent. But the beers is a family. They have the monopoly all, on all the diamonds that are made. And if you try, let's say you go back home and you dig and you find a diamond, a diamond is always very special. Okay, maybe you find a, a green diamond. So what they will do, they will get all the green diamond that they have, break the price, right? And so they will put you in bankruptcy. It's, it's nothing new, okay, that the, Amazon does the same thing, you know? So, so it's a monopole. It's called the De Beers family. But if you buy a zirconium, it will be shy, almost more shiny than a diamond, and no one will uh, will tell. It doesn't say this is not a diamond, you know. You cannot tell. And uh, so here it shows if you are beyond the critical angle, everything will be reflected. If you are below the critical angle, then it will escape. So that's why cut of a diamond is a very uh, professional you have to be a professional you have to be trained to be able to cut the diamond just right so light will be reflected again and again in a very specific way so then you can get a blue diamond a pink diamond whatever right and uh, I'm, I'm just want to finish here that uh, the one who found that 